let's understand clearly how a application runs in memory so this is your cpu cabinet and what you see here what you see here is actually the fan on top of the processor to keep it cool but actual processor may look something like this you would have seen this in the cabinets of the cpu or you can also search it on the internet and see this will have lot of these uh, pins to the cpu which get attached to the motherboard and on top of that is what you see a fan and whatever the software industry or programming or coding we call is all meant to make this processor do the work for you be it playing songs sending messages posting pictures on social media be it any task that you do on phone or on pc the software behind it asks this particular processor to do that work for you and what is the language that this processor understand that language is called binary languages in which there are only two characters one is zero and another is one here is a diagram which explains what happens when you load an applications let's say in a hard disk or ssd you have an application let this application be your uh, say notepad or paint that you click once you double click on that what happens is this file the application file is there saved in the hard disk permanently and what does operating system do it reads this file from the hard disk and it loads that onto the ram now what is operating system internally operating system has bunch of processes that are already loaded in the ram so in the ram when you start a computer be it phone or computer your operating system is already running and when you click on the file this internally helps you to read this file and then open an application now application is in binary language if you open any application file on a pc in any notepad you will see a lot of garbage characters it is just that the editor is not understanding how to render it and it is showing it in a with a bunch of garbage characters now this particular application is loaded in the ram and you can see that these instructions are stored in ones and zeros and on this side you have the processor now in this processor you have different components inside this processor so there is one component called program counter and that points to the next instruction that need to be executed and in generally in the modern days the processor internally comes with multiple cores we'll talk about that a little later the program counter points to the first instruction and then from there on it will have instruction on okay where the file is how to read it and then load that file and once you load the file how will you know that it has been loaded in the file again the processor sends instruction to your screen to show visually that the file is open so your processor finally with the help of motherboard sends output to your graphics card and to your display to show a file which you can see on the screen now coming to the cpu architectures there are two different architectures widely one is called x86 another is called arm the arm it has a simple instruction sets whereas x86 has a large instruction set so generally in pcs earlier uh, even on pcs and macs x86 architecture was used and it has large complex set of instructions and it took lot of power to run lot of resources to run whereas arm had a reduced instruction set and it took less power to run hence most of your mobile phones were they were all based on arm architecture and lot of embedded systems used arm architecture now these days there are laptops and pcs who are also coming on arm architecture because now we are on the move and we want to make sure our batteries last longer and we are able to use our mobile devices for longer now based on this architecture the program the way the programs are written and the compiled will vary the programs are written for a specific architecture in the earlier days and as the days evolved the new languages came where they have been written in a way that it can run on different architectures 